Another advantage of the space at Doish Lagos was the ability to build his very own kart track, a track to share with friends and racers keen to develop the techniques required to perhaps follow in his footsteps or simply to have some fun. His lack of pretension and very easy manner with everyone involved was again typical of the man when on home territory and not under the media spotlight. Karting had marked the beginning of his own brilliant career and he was happy to lend a hand, offer advice and join in the atmosphere that felt so familiar. When this film was made, the kart track had only recently been completed and Senna was having his first hands-on experience with the kart for several years. A specially prepared machine was given the usual Senna inspection before he got ready to climb aboard and give it a run. The Formula One overalls and bright yellow helmet were recognised all over the world, but not often seen getting behind the wheel of a machine with less than one twentieth of the power of a Grand Prix car. But the years of separation from his first love became insignificant as soon as he was on track. Indeed, he was soon analysing areas for improvement. Fun, but they go too fast for me. <laughs> the kid, the, the, no, no way. They push very hard. They go very. They go pretty fast. Uh, they have also their their engines really going well. They pull very strong. That's fun. I'm gonna try some other go karts. See if I find a better one. <laughs> the advantage of being a world champion and owning the track, no one would ever have said no when asked if their cart could be borrowed. But in the next moment he was helping the kids once again, remembering his own debut. When I was eight or nine, I already had a proper go-kart, which was big for me. I was so small and light, so my go-kart was fast. I was so light compared to other people. And I used to run with other people, just playing at weekends. And we were outside Sao Paulo. Suddenly there were so many people playing there with go-karts that they decided to organize a small race. They asked my father if he would allow me to also participate. Because I was eight or nine, there were guys with 20, 25, 18. And my father was a bit scared, of course, and he eventually said OK. And the starting, the grid position, was established by drawing a piece of paper inside the helmet. So they put all the numbers there, grid position, and I was, because I was the little one, they told me, you take the first one, the first one to choose, take the number, and I took number one. So I was on pole position, uh, and, and that was really my first taste of competition. But it was only a, a game. And I remember I led 35 laps out of 40, because my go-kart was too fast for them. It was big advantage being light. And eventually I was, the last five laps I was second or third, 
and the guy behind me, who was much faster than me on the corners, could not overtake me on the straight. Eventually, he hit me from the back and I went off the circuit. And uh, so I didn't finish, but uh, it was good fun, good, uh, good memories. Back at the farm and it was time to go racing. The hero was back on his own cart, but had to start at the very back of the grid to give the others a chance. It didn't take him long to start picking them off one by one. Soon he was giving everybody a masterclass in driving at the limit, something he felt born to do. Despite being the first across the line from his back row starting position, a steward's inquiry was held. Ayrton's father decided he'd been guilty of irresponsible driving. And a new winner was declared, much to everyone's delight. A young lad therefore took a famous victory over a world champion, a day he would probably never forget. Ayrton himself seemed to shake off the disappointment remarkably well and went on to perform an efficient task as master of ceremonies. Aí, cadê a Vanessa? Vai ficar joinha aí, ó. Pequenininho. Tá? Aí, pessoal.